The COVID-19 pandemic has killed over a million Americans and continues to evolve, mutate, and infect many more uh, people across the country and across the world. It's still here. COVID's still an issue. Vaccines are, of course, still the best defense against serious illness and death. Uh, none of this should be news. What else shouldn't be news? But sadly, of course, here we are. And we're talking about it. Is the fact that COVID-19 is responsible for the deaths of a lot of Republicans. Now, look, normally uh, people would not be looking into how many deaths belong to a political party, um, you know, when it comes to a virus, when it comes to a pandemic. However, I think we've all, re uh, you know, knew uh, and have heard about the COVID denialism that had taken hold of a big chunk of the right wing. And so the reason that we say that is because I don't think it's also that surprising that a lot of Republicans died. Now. That said, is that going to have a big impact on the uh, on the midterm elections, or did it have a big impact on those elections? Well, I would think so, yes. But did I have any data to back that up? What well, we do now? According to a study from the National Bureau of Economic Research titled Excess Death Rates for Republicans and Democrats During the COVID-19 Pandemic, uh, which used <clears throat> voter registration, death records, uh, among other, you know, among other things, researchers found that twice as many Republicans had died from COVID-19 than their Democratic counterparts. In fact, the study says, in 2018 and in the early parts of 2020, death rates for Republicans and Democrats were similar and centered around zero. Both groups experienced a similar large spike in excess deaths uh, in the winter of 2020-2021. However, in the summer of 2021, after vaccines were widely available, the Republican excess death rate rose to nearly double that of Democrats, and the gap further widened in the winter of 21. So, hmm. In the beginning, uh, no vaccines. Know a lot about the virus. They know how to mitigate it. So, of course, he had the similar amounts of people who died. And then vaccines, Democrats took them. A lot of Republicans didn't. I'm not saying all Republicans, a lot of Republicans didn't. Now, look, uh, and I say that because I have conservative family members. They took the vaccine. They took COVID very seriously. And it's good. There are sane Republicans out there. Just, just to remind people, they do exist. They are alive. Uh, and by the way, more members of my family, the more conservative ones, they took the vaccine and they lived. And, and look, uh, I love my family. I love my in-laws. I can't stand their policy positions. But or, or where they are in the political spectrum, they're alive. And I think that's important. And the reason I bring that up is that while many Republicans did go insane anti-vax, a lot of them didn't, to be fair. And uh, again, they're still alive. Not only that, but I, I do have to remind everybody that being anti-vax didn't just, you know, isn't just a right-wing thing. It actually used to be a, left wing there were a lot of lefty voices that were anti-vax a lot of them were liberal wine moms on facebook sorry but covid really reversed that and now the most vocal anti-vax uh, voices were republicans and uh you know republican uh, politicians and a lot of conservative news outlets in fact the study noted that the gap in excess death rates between Republicans and Democrats is concentrated in counties with low vaccination rates and only materializes after vaccines became widely available. The question, of course, asked is, all right, well, how did this affect the midterms? Jason Schwartz, an associate professor of health policy at the School of Public Health at Yale, one of the authors of the study, told Motherboard that our study can't answer that. But it certainly seems plausible, given how just how stark the differences in vaccination rates have been among Democrats and Republicans. Let me just read between the lines on that. I, I think, for the translation, I guess, uh, yeah, sure, it had an impact, but we just don't want to say it. We don't want to say it because it's dark. Yeah, yeah, it's dark. Someone who put it a little bit more starkly is Philip Bump at the Washington Post and said, it had no effect on the midterms. Really? Really? Phil? Phil, you, you okay, Phil? Because you're saying things that 
don't seem to be true. He also uh, said that um, asking this question is a grotesque effort to score political points. No. It's just facts. Facts matter. If you got the vaccine, you were less likely to die. The people who died more, Republicans who had more anti-vaxxers. They refused to get vaccinated at a much higher rate. Not only that, but again, a lot of Republicans were the ones who called to end the super weak in many places, lockdowns early to get kids back to the schools so that, of course, parents can get back to work uh, and uh, so that they could also go to Applebee's again and not have to wear a damn mask. The same people that are like, you know what? Uh, we're more than happy to sacrifice grandma and older people so that we can go and get that, uh, you know, uh, uh, two for twelve dollar meal. Oh, uh, great, great. So I yes, I think it had an impact on the uh, uh, on the midterms. I how big of it? I, I can't quantify that because we don't have the data. But I definitely think it impacted turnout because you can't exactly turn out if you're dead. And that's despite, of course, what Republicans say about Democratic voters all the time. Now, Schwartz also said that he and his colleagues wanted to look at something that hadn't been carefully studied before. But we actually drill down to the level of individuals, in this case, individual death rates, and see whether or not politicization could be linked to mortality. So far, it looks like there really is a signal here, particularly linked to the availability of vaccines. Now, the other important, uh, and I should say fascinating data point for me is, again, we're going to focus on the deaths here, pre-vax. Research discovered that excess deaths between Democrats and Republicans had remained steady in the early part of the pandemic. Right, when we didn't have a defense against it. And then, once vaccines were available, had diverged. Now, there's another thing that happened, and that was, of course, policy. As I mentioned, the lockdowns, once we had vaccines, what was the point of locking down? Well, there wasn't. And so a lot of places did open up. And that's another, uh, you know, point where death rates had diverged. Schwartz said the reasons that, uh, you know, the excess deaths between Democrats and Republicans uh, had begun to separate were beyond the remit of the study, but had speculated that early COVID prevention measures were government-driven, while the vaccine required personal choice. You know, freedom. He said, if you think about the pre-vaccine period, those were times where a lot of measures in place to mitigate the virus were top-down government policy. Schools closing football games played in empty stadiums or restrictions on large indoor gatherings. There were absolutely political divides about those policies, but in some cases, they were harder for the individual to avoid once vaccines were on the scene. That really did shift things into that individual choice domain. And as a result of that, of course, uh, the excess death rate difference wasn't just a small thing. It's very large. In December of 2021, after vaccines were widely available, the Republican excess death rate rose to nearly double that of Democrats, and this gap widened further in the winter of 2021. This rose to a 153% difference after all adults could take the vaccine in just Florida and Ohio. And there it is. So look, you can get a lot of things from this. One, government policy saved lives at the cost of, of course, convenience, because yes, we were all inconvenienced by lockdowns. That's kind of the point. Uh, but, uh, oh, and by the way, it also impacted economic activity, which is the whole point that we needed, you know, stimulus measures, right? Uh, but that said, once those policies were lifted, Republicans said, oh, well, I'm not gonna stay home because uh, nobody's forcing me to stay home and I ain't gonna get vexed and I'm not gonna wear a mask. And so, Republicans two to one 
chose death. But it's my freedom. Okay, well, your freedom, all right, but you chose to die. <laughs> yes, are they facts? Of course, they're uncomfortable. They're morbid, but they're facts. And so at this point, look, uh, it's a good example of how fuck around, you fuck around, you're going to find out. 